Hello and welcome. This video, What Does a Basic Estate Plan Look Like?, is the second in a series of 10 videos designed to educate Utah residents about estate planning. For a list of all of our videos, see below or return to our website. In this video, we will answer the following questions. What is a revocable trust? And what are the benefits of a revocable trust? We will also look at what a revocable trust does and does not do. For more detailed information, you can visit our website at utahtrustsandestates.com. A basic estate plan in Utah will usually consist of several documents. A revocable trust, also sometimes known as a living trust, a pour over will, a general assignment of assets to the revocable trust, and a financial power of attorney. In addition, many people also sign an advanced health care directive at the same time they sign their financial estate planning documents. What is a revocable or living trust? As we will see, it is generally advisable to have a revocable trust rather than a traditional will. It is helpful to think of a revocable trust as a legal entity that holds title to substantially all of your assets during your lifetime. A revocable trust also contains all of the dispositive provisions of your estate plan. Where a revocable trust is used, the dispositive terms of the estate plan, that is the who gets what provisions, are usually included in the revocable trust document. In this sense, a revocable trust is a will substitute, a substitute for a traditional will. Almost always, you will be the trustee of your revocable trust and will remain in complete control of your assets. For a married couple, it is typical for the husband and wife to serve as co-trustees. Why is it helpful to have a revocable trust? After all, if a revocable trust is a will substitute, why have a revocable trust instead of a traditional will? A revocable trust accomplishes two important things. First, it avoids the need for a court-supervised probate of your estate after you die, and probate is generally something to be avoided. Second, a revocable trust avoids the need for a court-supervised conservatorship in the event you become incapacitated. Why avoid probate? The short answer to this question is that probate can be lengthy, time-consuming, expensive, inconvenient, and public. See video number seven of this series for a detailed description of what probate is and how it works. Why avoid a conservatorship? A conservatorship is a court-supervised proceeding that is instituted when a person becomes incapacitated. It is sometimes called a lifetime probate because, like probate, it is inconvenient, expensive, time-consuming, and public. Unlike probate, a conservatorship occurs while the incapacitated person is still alive and usually lasts for the rest of his or her lifetime, which can be years or even decades. It is therefore very difficult for family members, both emotionally and financially. How does a revocable trust avoid probate? Property must pass through probate if it is held in the decedent's name at the time of death, unless it was held in joint tenancy with another person or has a valid beneficiary designation. An asset is subject to probate only if it is held in the decedent's name as an individual at the time of death. An asset that is held in the decedent's revocable trust at the time of death avoids probate because it is not owned by her in her individual capacity. Rather, it is owned by her in her fiduciary capacity as trustee of her revocable trust. This simple distinction is enough to avoid probate even if she serves as trustee of her own revocable trust. Indeed, as I mentioned, most people usually do serve as trustees of their own revocable trusts. On death, the person the trust designates as successor trustee will immediately have the authority to manage and distribute the trust assets. But to avoid probate, title to the asset must actually be held in the name of the trustee of the revocable trust. It is not sufficient just to have an unfunded revocable trust. Merely having a revocable trust does not avoid probate. The decedent's property must be held in the revocable trust. 
Similarly, an asset will be subject to a conservatorship only if it is held in the decedent's name as an individual at the time he or she becomes incapacitated. An asset that is held in the decedent's revocable trust at the time of incapacity is not subject to the conservatorship because it is not owned by her in her individual capacity. Rather, it is owned by her in her fiduciary capacity as trustee of her revocable trust. On incapacity, the successor trustee will immediately have the authority to manage the trust assets for the benefit of the incapacitated person. But again, title to the asset must actually be held in the name of the trustee of the revocable trust. It is not sufficient just to have an unfunded revocable trust. For a discussion of how to fund a revocable trust, see video number four of this series. Utah has adopted the Uniform Probate Code, and as a result, its probate procedures are greatly streamlined compared to states that use traditional probate procedures. With traditional probate procedures, the principal inconvenience lies in the fact that there are frequent court hearings. In Utah, in most cases, there is only minimal contact with the court clerk, and there are no appearances at all before a judge. For a detailed description of probate, see video number seven of this series. Even though probate in Utah is less burdensome than it is in other states, there are nonetheless several good reasons to have a fully funded revocable trust in Utah in order to avoid probate. Reason number one, avoid a conservatorship. Probate may be comparatively easy in Utah, but a conservatorship is never easy anywhere. A fully funded revocable trust can avoid the need for a messy, expensive, court-supervised conservatorship in the event you become incapacitated. Reason number two for why it's good to have a revocable trust in Utah, even though probate is comparatively easy in Utah. Suppose you own out-of-state real property. If a Utah decedent owns out-of-state real property at death, probate can be very inconvenient. A probate will first need to be opened in Utah. That will be the easy part. The Utah executor will then need to open an ancillary probate in the state where the real property is located. If the real estate is located in a state that has not adopted the Uniform Probate Code's streamlined probate procedures, the ancillary probate may be administratively difficult and expensive. On the other hand, if the property is held in the decedent's revocable trust, the successor trustee of the trust will hold legal title and will be able to distribute the property to the beneficiaries or sell it to a third party, all without getting the court involved. Reason number three, a move to another state. Even though probate in Utah is relatively simple, if you move to another state with just a traditional will, your estate will be subject to probate in that state. If you move to a state with burdensome probate procedures, like California, your heirs will wish that you had a revocable trust. With a fully funded revocable trust, you may be able to avoid probate entirely. Reason number four, emergency administration. If for some reason, action needs to be taken immediately after your death, as for example, where a large transaction is scheduled to close shortly after death, where litigation involving your estate is pending, or where a statute of limitations is about to expire, a special administrator can be appointed by a judge on an emergency basis. But if you have a fully funded revocable trust, your successor trustee will have the authority to act without getting the court involved. Reason number five, privacy. Where a probate is opened, your will becomes a matter of public record, available for inspection by anyone and everyone. If you simply leave your estate to your children in equal shares, privacy might not be much of a concern. But if your dispositive plan is at all unusual, for example, favoring some children over others, you will probably not want it to be a matter of public record. Ultimately, there is really no good reason not to have a revocable trust unless you have a small estate under $100,000 for which no probate is needed. For a discussion of small estates, see video number seven of this series. A few words on what a revocable trust does and does not do. As we have seen, there are really just two reasons to have a revocable trust instead of a traditional will. 
First, a fully funded revocable trust eliminates the need for a court-supervised probate of your assets upon death. Second, a fully funded revocable trust eliminates the need for a court-supervised conservatorship of your assets in the event of incapacity. There are three popular misconceptions about revocable trusts. The first is that they save or eliminate estate taxes. Not true. The second is that they save or eliminate income taxes. Not true. The third is that they protect assets from creditors. Also not true. These three notions are all false. A revocable trust does not save estate taxes. It is true that a revocable trust can contain provisions that will help reduce estate taxes, such as the creation of a credit shelter trust, but those same provisions can be drafted into a traditional will. Simply having a revocable trust, even if fully funded, does not in itself save estate taxes. A revocable trust does not save income taxes. Because a revocable trust is revocable, it is treated as your alter ego for income tax purposes. Indeed, the trust's tax identification number is your own social security number. Income generated by revocable trust assets is reported on your personal income tax return. And a revocable trust does not protect assets from creditors. Again, because your revocable trust is revocable by you, it is treated as your alter ego. Creditors can reach assets in your revocable trust just as easily as they can reach assets that are held in your own name. That concludes this video. I hope you have found it helpful. For more information on this topic, you can visit our website at utahtrustsandestates.com or call us at the number you see on your screen. For some suggestions on how to structure your revocable trust, see video number three of this series. For a discussion of funding revocable trusts, see video number four. For a discussion of the operation of revocable trusts, see video number five. For a discussion of probate in Utah, see video number seven. If you would like to watch another video in this series, either click on the appropriate link below or return to our website. Thank you.